Paris referendums are underway as Moscow tries to solidify its hold on occupied territory. Our senior international correspondent, Ben Wiedemann, is on the ground for us in Kharkiv in Ukraine tonight. Ben, is this so-called voting essentially happening at gunpoint? Basically, it is, Wolf. I mean, we're, we're seeing video and hearing reports of uh, election workers going house to house, door to door, uh, with ballot boxes accompanied by armed men, in some cases armed men wearing balaclavas. Uh, there's no real secrecy uh, in this vote. Uh, some people we're hearing, know, aware that these election workers are going from door to door, are locking their doors, closing their curtains, and simply not answering uh, to avoid voting. In fact, the Ukrainian authorities have urged residents of the occupied territories not to answer the door in case strangers show up. Now, at the bowling booths themselves, the bowling sta excuse me, the polling stations uh, themselves, apparently there are no, there aren't any voting booths. Basically, you vote in the open. Now, Ukrainian officials say anywhere between in some areas, 50 to 75 percent of the population uh, of these areas occupied by the Russians, the populations have left. They've gone because of the war, because of the occupation. And so to make up for the lack of numbers, according to Ukrainian intelligence, which has intercepted documents, it indicates that they're allowing children as young as 13 uh, to vote. So all indications are that this is a farcical, a sham uh, referendum, but obviously the Russians are pushing it as hard as possible to provide the legitimacy for when inevitably, it seems, they are going to announce their annexation of these areas. Wolf? Ben Wiedemann reporting for us uh, from Ukraine. Ben, thank you very much. Meanwhile, in Russia right now, Putin's military mobilization is driving desperate people to flee the country. Our senior international correspondent, Matthew Chance, is tracking the situation for us. Matthew, you've been watching the dramatic fallout, the mass protest, the thousands of Russians fleeing, mounting pressure on Putin at the same time. Give us the latest information you're getting. Yeah, the, the stakes, Wolf, are really getting really high uh, in Russia for Vladimir Putin because um, although there are no protests at the moment, there's more expected over the next few days, we are still seeing thousands upon thousands of people, mainly men of fighting age, but also with their families as well, trying as best they can to get out, get out of the country. Train stations packed, trains traveling outside of the country filled with young men of fighting age. Lines of cars towards the borders in the west, in the south, um, uh, other directions as well, just doing whatever they can. Flights as well, absolutely packed, sold out um, as soon as the tickets become available, as people desperately try uh, to uh, get out of Russia. Because even though Vladimir Putin has made it clear that he intends to conscript reservists only, people with military experience, um, and he's calling it a partial um, mobilization, nobody really buys that. People are concerned that this is going to be much, much broader. And already there are stories about people who have never been in the army, that have been served papers that they have to go into the uh, military straight away. There are terrible stories about protesters who have been protesting against the draft and against the war, who have been taken by the police from the protests and moved directly uh, into the armed forces, being drafted directly from the protests. Um, uh, and so there are these astonishingly frightening scenes taking place. And actually, I mean, I know a lot of Russians because I've lived there for so long, but you know, this is the first time that I've, I've, I've spoken to people uh, and they are genuinely anxious and concerned about what's going to happen next. For so long, this was just a conflict that was on their television screens, didn't touch their lives. Now, with this mobilization or this partial mobilization, it has really come to life and really come home for the majority of Russians. The pictures are so, so dramatic. You know, Matthew, uh, we've also learned here in Washington that U.S. intelligence officials have been privately warning Russia against using nuclear weapons, and they've been doing so for several months. What else are you learning? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've been doing that privately. That's a story that was first, of course, reported by the Washington Post, but now uh, we've confirmed it from our sources uh, as well. Uh, and that's interesting. That there are these back channels uh, between Washington and Moscow still when it comes to these most serious of issues. But I would say that 
um, you know, the, the United States, U.S. officials, Biden, you know, uh, his, his officials, his Secretary of State as well, Anthony Blinken, they've been publicly warning uh, the Russians as well uh, that there will be consequences, although, you know, they haven't said what those consequences would be, but consequences uh, for Russia using tactical or, of course, strategic uh, nuclear weapons. It's not the first time uh, that Vladimir Putin has threatened the use of this sort of ultimate military force. He tends to do a bit of nuclear saber rattling uh, when he's feeling quite uh, defensive. And the interpretation at the moment is that they're not seeing any signs in the U.S. Uh, from the U.S. side of any kind of actual movements towards deploying nuclear missiles uh, with a view to actually using them. Uh, but obviously, when a nuclear power like Russia makes a threat like this, on some level, you have to take it seriously. You have to plan for it. And that's what Vladimir Putin is hoping for, of course. Matthew Chance reporting for us. Matthew, thank you very much. Let's discuss all of this and more with the former director of national intelligence, the CNN national security analyst, retired General James Clapper. General, thanks so much for joining us. How do you predict Russia could use these phony referendums in Ukraine to escalate this war? Well, Wolf, I think, uh, well, first of all, we'll all be sitting on the edges of our seats awaiting the results of these referendums uh, t next Tuesday. And, of course, I, I, you know, the concern is uh, the connection of these referenda with uh, Putin's um, statements implying uh, or inferring the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that is specifically a threat to uh, Russian sovereignty, Russian territory, uh, which in his mind, or at least he's arguing or asserting, would be a, a, a threat to the existence of Russia. So that, I think, is the obvious concern with this, these hasty referenda uh, as, as a justification for the potential use of nuclear weapons. I think that's, you can't dismiss it uh, as a possibility, but I, I, I would still argue that that uh, is, is unlikely that he, he would actually do that. I think this is more the nature of a, a fancy bluff uh, and an attempt to intimidate the West. As you heard, uh, General Clapper, the U.S. has been privately, privately warning Moscow on the consequences of actually deploying a nuclear weapon. Now, what does that tell you about how seriously the Biden administration is taking Putin's repeated nuclear threats? Well, obviously, and we all have to take it seriously. We, uh, you know, he has nuclear, Putin has uh, nuclear weapons at his disposal. So you cannot completely dismiss the possibility that, that he, he might use them. Now, you might want to think through, well, what he, exactly would he uh, hope to achieve if he did use nuclear weapons? So I think it's the prudent thing to do, and I'm sure the, uh, the administration is using all the channels of the communication available to them, the Pentagon, the State Department, uh, to convey the message uh, which President Biden has done publicly, uh, not to use nuclear weapons. And I think uh, not being explicit, a little strategic ambiguity about just what we want, would do if he did employ him is, is a good thing, because yeah. that adds uh, d a complexity to the calculus, whatever it is, that Putin has. When you look, at General Clapper, at all these drastic moves by Putin in recent days, the massive mobilization, the crackdown on protesters, the nuclear threats, the sham referendums. What, is that, what does it all say to you about his mindset right now? Well, I think, well, he's in trouble, and I think he, he knows it. I think uh, his options are uh, declining. Uh, the mobilization uh, is not going to change the outcome of uh, the, situa the combat situation at all. Uh, the images, the, the two images of uh, demonstrators opposing it, which is a brave thing to do in Russia these days, and the image of vehicles lined up at the borders, Finland, from, from Finland to Kazakhstan, the people fleeing to avoid the mobilization, I think, is emblematic of the situation he faces and the lack of will to fight. And all he's going to do is generate more cannon fodder for the Ukrainians, uh, and so it's not going to have any impact. But th this is uh, illustrative when you consider where he was seven months ago, where he thought that th this would be a romp, and now he's having to do a, a partial mobilization 
uh, and you know quickly stage the sham referenda and once again try to intimidate the West with threats of, of the use of nuclear weapons, I think are indicative that he's in a bad place and he knows it. And he, and he sees these demonstrations on the streets of Moscow at the same time. James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, thanks so much.